Hey folks, Q&A time everyone. I decided to give as many questions as possible the room to breathe. So expect to see one come out about every week or so alongside your regular step back content. Jason Blood asked me what I think about the UK and the EU. Of course, I decided to tackle this question first as it has already been a week since the Brexit vote and this is as hot a take as I can muster as a historian. So, when I think of the Brexit vote, my mind goes to another referendum. Here in Canada, when I was at the tender age of six, there was a referendum on whether Quebec, la belle province, would leave our confederation. I was a French Canadian living outside of the province, and most of us were pretty scared it might happen. It failed, but by like 5,000 votes. And when the head campaigner for the Leave campaign blamed the defeat on, quote, the ethnic vote, separatism caused quite a bitter taste in a lot of mouths. Things have been cool in the last 21 years since. What does this have to do about the Brexit? Well, just like the vote, we worried about a tanking Canadian dollar, dissolving other parts of the country, and general chaos. The only difference is Quebec said no to that. However, many people planned for what might happen if it passed, and the establishment politicians had settled on two major scenarios, and I could see a parallel with the UK and the EU. One school of thought was that to make it all work, both Canada and Quebec, or the UK and the EU, would make a lot of compromises and capitulations in order to make the exit as painless for both parties as possible. This could result in a Brexit that still has free migration and the European market, but nobody in Brussels, like Norway, except with Scotland and possibly Ireland on their way out, with much, much less bargaining power. The second school of thought was that the process would be long, painful, and difficult, that the years of negotiating Quebec's leaving Confederation would be such an ordeal that public support would erode, and the mere process of separation would drive another referendum that would fail. We are already seeing some major blowback from the Brexit passing, and the UK might be so sick of it that by the time it comes to put pen to paper, sentiment could call for another referendum. This is the solution I think the UK would need to keep Scotland and perhaps Ireland and Gibraltar. It also is setting a weird precedent in an age where it seems far-right and semi-fascist factions are popping up everywhere. Something I, and I think other like-minded people, need to be more vigilant about opposing and combating when it emerges. More on that when I answer the Donald Trump question. Overall, I think this was a weird confluence of factors that I sincerely hope does not reflect the British people as much as it seems. It has dark forecasts for peace and stability in Europe, and I really hope it's not just because of the farcical belief that it was people speaking Polish or observing Ramadan that put British people in economic stagnation. Goldman Sachs and other big American banks caused it. We know this with like numbers and everything. Thanks for the question, Jason. Let's talk about the Brexit and history down in the comments and come back for more Step Back.